Let's let's go to six here. Game one. Go to five. Go to five. Reluctantly keep. Guess I can use the rebirth as a land, so I can just put back the blood crypts. So if I draw a land, uh, I'll hold the rebirth, and if I don't, I'll keep it. Why? Why me? <laughs> you didn't need to kill Teferi to feign death if you let the Archon trigger resolve first. They have Veil of Summer up. I can't Archon trigger. The mom will change water in a more radical way than any recent standard sets. I don't, not significantly, if uh, if if more. Could honestly be going to game two already. This looks like Trellon's list. I was told yesterday that 80% decks in modern fold to Leyline of the Void plus pressure, so. Maybe that's what's going on. But it hasn't done much so far. I also haven't cast a spell. Well, the five. I guess if I draw Grief, I can go Grief Scam. They pop the relic, and then I um, get to thoughts use myself reanimate Archon, which is like at least a plan, which is not something I've had until now. A suspend profane tutor. So now I can play this. All right, I'll give it one more turn. But even if the Profane Tutor coming down, I just don't know how we ever win. They crack Relic and thought sees ourselves. Yeah, well, they're not going to crack the Relic. We, we can, if we draw Grief, we can incentivize them too. Because they could have thought sees for more info. But I've, I've seen the trail on list. Although I can't remember if they play Leyline in the Void in the sideboard. Um, I think I'm going to be off all of my Furies and consequently be down a Fain Death. I can play like one wear tear and like the third thoughtsies. But a super slow for people. We've heard we've heard some reports that Magic Alliance being a little extra slow today. The Leyline, awesome. Yeah, I think the first wear tear is fine. Miraculously, have a white source. Uh, I don't like this hand very much though. It's Mulligan. I do like this one. So I guess I put back Grief. Like, oh, this is just, you know, great. You just go Thoughtseize into Reunion into the Persist. I think I'm getting Swamp into Sacred Foundry. I guess I just... Uh, yeah, our life total's not that relevant. I could just get both crypts. In before two relics. Oh, I, I, I was late. I was late to say in before two relics. What do we do? I guess we take a relic, then they play relic, and then they can't Night Whisper because I have Archon in the yard. I might just have to like persist and like just force the like three for one. Ryan, Nancy Munsey, thank you. Yeah, I don't feel too bad about it. This is another reanimator experience, of course. Could draw stony, but then they just pop. I guess I wait a turn. Um, since like, if I have footsteps to Archon, there's a really good chance they just don't pop the relic. I, I, I want them to pop it. Oh yeah, I also didn't want to get swamped because they're on eight field of ruins. 
Exposing the white source to demolition feels scary. Yeah, I suppose. Not super used to playing the matchup. I played against it a couple times the other night, actually. In the same league. If I turn one Thoughtseize myself, I can turn two Archon even through double Relic. I, you're right. Was it correct to do so, though? Maybe. It's, like, really weak to, like, a removal spell. Really, really weak to a Thoughtseize. Yeah, it's just too weak to a Thought Caesar animation spell, but kind of a fun line. Right, I'm gonna concede. Expose the white source to the eight field deck. That seems like a bad matchup. Main deck and relics. You can be able to get shelf through white mana. Three mana to exile a card from yard and make a zombie. If it was a creature. Invasion of Regatha. I, what is Regatha? Is... I don't know what plane that is. Mamu, 20 months ago, thank you. What about Trellon's Coffer decks? It's built in like a style that like is not kind of antithetical to mine, but... It's winning a lot. ETB, 4 damage to one other battle or opponent. 4 damage... One damage up to one other creature. So can't target creatures. But flips into a 4-4 four, four prowess. If a non-creature source would deal damage to your opponent, it deals that plus two. Wow, so it's a very, very powerful battle. Um, I'm going to wait a turn on the grief. Could be good to get it because of Grist, but the bitter reunion maybe makes me not too worried about Grist. Invasion of a core of Empire Hex Mage. I mean, a 4 mana 8-8, eight, eight, pretend like you have unblockable, is, is really not that strong. It's, it's like, if, if, that, if that was the entire text on the card, 4 mana 8-8, eight, eight, um, creatures can act as if they weren't blocked. Like, that's not a modern playable card. And it's like, not even close. But, um, there is more, it is, this card is in theory better than that. In theory, this card is more versatile. So, um, I don't know. But just like, but if we're just trying to go for four mana, get a hex mage, flip the battle, have an eight eight, that's just it's just not good enough. <laughs> I'm griefing now because of the kid of endurance. Yeah, hex mage does flip battles, so that's something to keep an eye on, of course, as we continue. Whoa! Why did they? Why did they cord here? Surely they wanted to keep the cord to get Yogmoth, right? It's oh, oh. <laughs> a lot of lands. Just rip persist. But like in theory, they just have nothing here, right? They probably have a second court. They don't. We saw their hand. We saw their hand. <laughs> their hand was their hand was cord evolution wall wall. And I just took the evolution. I guess oh they thought I was gonna they thought I was gonna scam the grief is why they thought I was gonna scam the grief. Ah <laughs> oh, man, it's probably not even correct. I'm just gonna touch the thin dome. Ugh. The variance is really hitting me in the head, huh? Convoke. Trample Ward 2, ETB two counters on it for each creature that evoked it. I like the Ward 2 on that. They they literally ripped Cord. <laughs> it's okay. I, Yogmoth, we're a Fury deck against Yogmoth, so it's not going to be so bad. Um, I'm going to bring in all the Thoughts Uses because they're a Endurance deck. I think I'm trimming one Fable, one Footsteps. I, play, I brought in some Path of Perils last night. I wasn't sure if that was really the angle I wanted to attack on. I don't really think so. I think it's mostly just for a hammer. Uh, I don't think I saw the five color battle, no. Seraph of New Phyrexia. And Seraph of New Capenna. Oh, I got completed. It's a limited card. 
We saw the, the new Hardened Scales. That card's pretty exciting. Convoke, destroy target creature, Planeswalker, Surveil 2. Cool card. This is this kind of card would like blown my mind like five years ago. Six years ago. <laughs> now it's like, oh, cool. Yeah, I think Merfolk might play this card. Um, but, I don't know, it's a me mediocre two-drop. Oh, I really like this card. I saw this one this morning. I really like it. It's not good, probably. But a, a one mana, a, a blue mana dork that makes two mana. Although it's only mana that you can activate it, use to activate abilities is very fun. Um, so we have no fury, we have no grief. Our first play is a turn three fable. I think we could do better. Okay, we have fury. We don't have a red card, but I think this is a still a good keep. We'll get to the five color saga in a second. Thoughtseize for endurance is always really important in this matchup. Okay, and I was like almost at the five color battle. Okay, five color battle. Wooberg, Invasion of Alora. Awesome. Uh, ETB, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile two non land cards with mana value four or less. You may cast one of them without paying the mana cost, then put the other into your hand. Okay. That's a lot of words. Sorcery. Oh, and then it flips to target player draws two cards. You may put an artifact card from your hand on the battlefield. Oh, why artifact? Oh, I hate that. It's like you're not playing an art artifacts in your five color deck. Really sad about that. Like you're just you're, like what artifact are you playing in your five color deck? Create a token of target permanent you control. Distribute three counters among one, two, three target creatures. Destroy permanent vehicles. I guess you just ignore that text. Yeah, chromatic lantern. Huh? Cool card. Uh, hard to evaluate. This is uh, a lot of text. This is like a whole book. The art is sick. The effect is interesting. Excited to think about it some more. Golos? Oh, there we go, baby. That's, you know, something. Because it's a lard is what the ultimatums do. It's just like one piece of each ultimatum. <laughs> Reaper King. <laughs> uh, that, card's, that card's pretty cool. That card's pretty cool. Oh, um, it's not templated. Hold on. Wait, it might be broken. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It might be broken. I need to read it again. Or like as broken as a five mana spell can be in modern. Cause like, can't you just kill it immediately with a spell you find? Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna go hardcast fury, hardcast fury at this point, right? Okay, if I evoke fury, I go one, 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 two, two. Yeah, I'll just go hardcast, hardcast. So when it enters the battlefield, exile cards from the top of your library to exile two non-line cards, cast one of them. Wait, if you just find something that kills the battle, it just immediately flips. Right? Am I am I wrong that you can you can just cast this, like find a vindicate, vindicate it? Because vindicate works, right? The vindicate cast is defeating it. Find just like a disenchant. And then all of a sudden you get to draw two, create a token, distribute three counters, destroy a permanent. Maybe that's not that good. Needs to do seven damage. Okay, I thought that this—I thought that destroy defeated the battle. Okay, so you have to find vampire hex mage. Okay. I swear somebody told me that like the, like vindicate worked on the battles, but you know I just listened to Twitch chat. <laughs> But still, like just just like hit a hex mage is interesting. You also get like another card in your hand. It's five mana in modern, uh, but you know we're casting a five drop right now. Probably just gonna kill their undying creatures. Stop them from courting with the wall of roots super effectively. Not that they would. It's half attack. 
So new Cascade deck replay only does a hex mage. Well, I think it's like I don't know. There's 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 some there's some stuff going on. I don't. It's hard to say. You can also like just attack it. You know. Yeah, I, I, I people keep talking about. Oh, <laughs> well, we put in plans to that. Yeah, people keep talking about the that 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 battle the 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 like finale of devastation, but like. Four, four mana, eight, eight, unblockable reach is not a modern playable card. So it, it needs to do more than that. Down to three. Interesting. Yeah, I, yeah, I know, I know. It, it is better than that because you don't have to get hex mage every time. But at least to me, like the hex mage synergy with it is not that exciting. It's not that exciting. It's maybe not that bad against Merc Tide. They have a hard time with eight eights, but it's also four mana like spell pierceable spell. Wish you could play it in rhinos. So if I, I can't really attack. So weird that I can't attack. Straw looter, right? What if you just blink the battle on repeat? Uh, blinking blinking non-creature permanence is very difficult to do. This this happens like all the time with enchantments that have ETB effects. Uh, chatters will suggest, oh, oh, let's just blink it. You like you, you can't blink uh, non-creature permanence very easily. There's almost like no good way to do it. We <laughs> do another persist. They don't have a third endurance. I do this pre-combat. Oh, stupid fail. Okay, now we can get in though. Uh, still kind of cold to them top decking Yogmoth. Of course, they have a million Yogmoths. Fildar, yeah, like Fildar is like the only way, right, or like the best way. I'm trying to think of like any other like good one. It's it's very very rare that you can flicker non-creature permanence. Flick wisp, yeah, sure. Yeah, couldn't dodge it forever. They also made a mistake by not veiling a response to Archon, right? Because they could have found another Endurance. This game is not over, though. And it's like, these Flicker effects, too, are just, like, not ever near as, a, as efficient as Ephemerate. Felder was just and copy those. But the thing is, like, I don't want to put a bunch of Felder Guardians and Flicker was in my deck. But you could, you could. Gets better for sure. Deck tech five color cat combo. We literally already brewing with invasion of Alara. <laughs> so the idea is you're gonna fold our guardian it. So you try to hit fold our guardian, flicker it, hit Sahili. Uh, you should have four red and sixes in the stack. Uh, you should also almost definitely not have Ice Fang. Ice Fang is so bad with Leyline Binding. I just, just don't 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 put Leyline Binding and Ice Fang in the same deck, in my opinion. Like Ice Fang is like people are also playing Ice Fang in that Gorios deck. It's like it just it just never has Death Touch. Like Wall of Omens is is like literally better than Ice Fang in there. Oh, opponents going down to one. Yogmoth is so much worse when they're at one. Do we just win? <laughs> Wow, we did just one. Yeah, Prismatic Ending is yeah probably pretty bad with um, your Invasion plan. So probably no Endings, and then you could do something like... No no Endings, no Ice Fangs, 4 Ren, 4 Teferi, 4 Omnath for the Endings, and then you could just play Solitude, right? Solitude over the... Ice Fangs. Solitude or Wall of Omens. Wall of Omens and Flickers is nice, but... I like that Leyland Binding doesn't get hit by Invasion, so I, I kind of want to keep that in. 
You can do Wall of Omens over Fable. Fable is like not close to mandatory, and you can do Solitude over um, Ice Fang, or you can do Solitude Fury over Ice Fang and Fable. You can also play Ephemerate at that point, although Ephemerate's pretty bad with Invasion. But Invasion is like also, I don't know, it's yet to be determined if that card is even good. You lose Giganta, losing Giganta doesn't matter much. Man, he's another black source. Yeah, likely, likely two black sources. Not, not mandatory though. Um, you could also play the new Omnath in that deck too. That could be fun. Okay, probably not very good. Uh, on the draw against Yogmoth. So hard to keep a hand without Fury. We don't have Archon. Yeah, we just have to Mulligan. Could actually keep this on seven, maybe because you get to persist the Archon on turn three. Okay, keep this, put back one of these. Oh, mold to five, get Thought Seized. Give me back that seven. Thanks the Grief, it's fine. I drew a land. I think I'm gonna play this so I can like find a three drop and play it on turn three. Or like find footsteps plus like fourth mana. Well the five get double thought seized, although they are at fourteen already. One lander, alright. Now how about you get the Ah, uh, never mind. <laughs> This is worse if I draw, like, Spyro, but, like, if I draw Persist, I'll just Thoughtseize myself. They probably have Endurance, but... Uh, I could also get Veil of Summer. I don't know. I, th I think I think that, like, the ability to, like, Persist myself if I draw it is pretty nice. They might have Veil. I, I, obviously, now I... Like, this is the exact card that really punishes me here. I could wait a turn, but also, like... Getting four power and play against Yawgmoth when they just have Peatland and they're at 14 life. This is, like, really good. Uh, pr like, pr like if I can get them down to, like, six from these attacks, though, like, their Yawgmoth plan is just all of a sudden so much worse. And assuming that they are on, like, Veil of Summer plus Endurance, this is a better line against that. How did they keep... They kept the Zero Lander on the play, so they, they must have, like, all the cyber cards, right? Um, I guess I just play Meyer and pass. So they drew their second land. They're down to nine. Why not reading discard Meyer? Already have Archon and Yard. Well, I wouldn't be able to hardcast the Fury if I draw a land, and so like discarding land to try to draw a land is not not that appealing. But obviously, like, yeah, if there's Persist on top, then... Boy, I wish I'd cast the Reunion. I'm, de I'm definitely casting this this turn to put the pressure on them. So I don't want to let them chump block. How much damage does this Peela dealt them three? And it's still, you know, still pinging them. They tap Peela for Young Wolf. Go for go for the throw of the Fury. So they go to they're going to down to one life, which they can just never win at. Yeah, so many go for the throats of Yogmoth lately. Any Yogmoth players want to talk about this? I've been seeing so many, and like I keep people keep bringing it in against me when I'm like, I just have creatures. I, I, I'm like, it's, it's odd. Like, you have Grist as a removal spell. If I pay for a deck deck, can you pick your favorite card in your cube so I know what to sign when to come to Minneapolis? Sure, sounds fair. You like cube, and I do like money. <laughs> I 
think about it. And again, I don't play a lot of Pioneer. Maybe I'm just off, off base a bit, but it's like... In Pioneer, you have Treasure Cruise and Dig Through Time, both of which are better card advantage spells than Snapcaster Mage. Both use the graveyard, but it's like... You also don't have, like, any, like, good, cheap spells to flash back with Snapcaster. <laughs> which is, of course, always such a... Oh, they're an Obosh deck, interesting. Like you, like, you need good, cheap spells to flash back. Like, those don't really exist in Pioneer. Or there aren't very many of them. Okay, so we have the Feign Death to go for footsteps. We do need to find uh, a land, potentially. Like, Snapcaster Mage in Standard was playable, but it wasn't that good. And even, like, a lot of control decks... Like, so, like, Jeskai with, like, Restoration Angel and Snapcaster Mage. Like, there's a Jeskai control deck that played it, but there were some, like, Blue, White, and Esper variants that either only played, like, two or played none, is how I recall it. It'd be a strong one or two. And, like, but in, like, what deck? In Control? In, in Murktine? I don't know. At the very least, like, I think it's a super safe addition, the Pioneer... Uh, but it, it would also be like a likely a disappointing addition. The Rune Treasure Spike deck, yeah. So at least at least for me, sorry, so that's sorry. I always forget this because this was before my time, right? I always say Snapcaster didn't see play in standard. It did. It did see a lot of play, but it saw play when Ponder, Vapor Snag, and Mana Leak were legal. Um, when those three cards were legal, Snapcaster was just on top of the world, completely unstoppable. You had you had you had Snapcaster plus you just, it was just the sickest. Um, but when you like, but when you're pairing with like Azurius Charm and Sphinx's Revelation and Supreme Verdict as like your only good spells, it, like dissipate, it just all of a sudden was like not that good. They have two Solitudes. Damn it. I think I have to take both solitudes here. I was not ho I was not hoping to um, feign death my grief here. All right, they just have the the bolt. That's okay. We can go footsteps plus haste. Get the archon trigger. Get the solitude ephemerate out of the hand. Serum vision's not preordained. Oh, it was it was ponder. They had ponder, right? Sarah, Sarah Vision's not pretty good. Okay, I see, but you, you mentioned Ponder. Yeah, so, like, like when that, when, like, those cards were Snapcaster and, and Standard. Very, very good. Um, <clears throat> very, very good. Just, like, a, but a totally different uh, dynamic to, like, Return to Ravnica in a Strand Standard. Where it, it did see play. It did see play, but it was not, it was not even, like, a staple. Maybe, maybe you could call it a staple, but it was, like, it was not, like, a top 20 card in the format. All right, that's for the uh, cube deck tech. I'm happy to take a look. This would be like a four for one. Yeah, so Snapcaster gut shot was pretty good. Ah, yeah, but that deck was the sickest, huh? Right, pretty good exchange for us. So their hand is Ragavan Mystery Card. Oh yeah, also Thought Scour. Jeez. Yeah, it was just so much better back then. And it's kind of my same thoughts on Snapcaster and Pioneer, of course. Is like 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 Art RTR is like such a like I think design sort of a big design shift in um, in Magic. I don't know. Resto fell out of favor. Yeah. Oh, I don't, I would love to see um, I'd love to see Restoration Angel and Pioneer. Such an iconic card. Such a fun card. For like the long after after RTR Innistrad Standard, I framed my uh, I framed my Restoration Angels and my Thrag Tusks on them <laughs> together <laughs> together forever retired. <laughs> Killer, 13 months ago, thank you. Okay, so there's the cube tech deck for uh, Cube Cobra. 
Got to pick my favorite card. Pack one, pick one. But only... Never seen this card. Honestly, like, I'm real. I'm always really likely to, like, pick a card I've never played with in cube. Even if I don't think it's correct. Just to get to play with it for the first time. This card is sick. Attack Flicker. I've never seen it. Plays Ragavan. Loots away two lands. Passes. Alright, not too bad. You have two necromancies, probably probably just duplicate, right? This is fun. But it's also the card I'm gonna sign in Minneapolis, so I have to think about that too. You fury, I fury, everybody's furying, furious. Might be better to kill reflection than to kill fury. Let me see what we draw. Hmm. I think this draw makes it better to kill this. Play kind of like let the fury kill something and then feign death in combat. Oh, uh, oh, so this is the wrong Tristani. <laughs> I would have picked a four mana Tristani. You have the five mana one. Pretty exciting. Yeah, so I'll just grief them, then attack with Fury, Feign Death if they block. If not, I can block with Spyro and Feign Death probably. Well, if they, if they block Fury on Fury, my Feign Death doesn't kill their Obosh. But I get an 8-8 eight, eight, or a 4-4 four, four double strike, which is, you know, worth one mana. Killer with the 13 months, I don't think I said thank you. I'm really taking my time on the, the cube pick. <laughs> is this the Art of Restoration Angel? If you have Avacyn Restored... Uh, Restoration Angel, I pick that one, but if it's if not, I pick something else. Uh, so I'm playing on I'm playing poker with some friends tonight, but I'm gonna do Dark Souls on Friday. Have a longer, longer Dark Souls stream on Friday. All versions of the one. Okay, okay. So yeah, not that one then. I I I just the the Avacyn Restored one. I just have such a soft spot for. That's the one I played with. Okay, one game one. It's Boros or just guy Obosh. Yeah, I think they're just on relic because they're Obosh, so I should be in the Stony Silences. Something like this. Like the look of it. Could play one weird tear, I think not yet. Get back to the cube. Hellrider in strong contention. Foxside Chef in strong contention. Whoa, this card is sick. Actually, that was Modern Legal. Pretty cool card. Mm, I'm gonna pick a Dockside Chef. Thank you, Band of 20 Months. Yeah, I'll just text in for Pog. Yeah, I feel like Stitch Together would be interesting, addition to Modern. Only reanimate if you have Thresholds, you play Stitcher Supplier. But Supplier is way better because you have 8 reanimates. I'll keep this. It is my, this was my only white, I guess I could Fable for white source potentially. All right, I'm pitching the Fable. I don't know, I think I have to do this. <laughs> I think I have to do this. 
We'll figure it out. Dodgy Bolt, Dodging Pending. They have Fury and Solitude, but if they're pitching, that's fine. Imp Ancient Imperius are got spoiled. Wondering if you like it as much. I don't think I've seen that card yet. I, if I have seen it, I just still don't know any of the cards by name. Right, big draw step for me. Fable's kind of a nice pickup. The big convoked dinosaur. Yeah, it's, it's hard to evaluate. Um... I like the Ward 2 on it. I like that it's big and bad. It dodges Heat and Fury and um, Push. Not the Push is like that relevant, I guess, at the moment. I, I, I kind of like it. I kind of like it, and I kind of don't. That'd be five bucks. <laughs> the new Ozleth... Um, the new Ozleth is like the... It's like hard, the new Hardened Scales. That card seems very exciting for... For scales. Um, I kind of like footstepping Fury, give it haste, hit them for a bunch. Obash into the hand. Down to just five life. Pretty sure we're. Oh, I, yeah, I can, I can Fable in Stony and get Swamp for Blood Moon. Sort of kind of awkward, I guess, with the Fable and the treasure tokens, but I, I do think that they're on Relic as their Graveyard Hate, and um, I'm gonna take this opportunity to get it down. Why not scam Fury again? Um, I didn't have a... I could have done it the turn prior, right? Kill to Fairy, then scam. Um, kind of feel like I wanted to play to not miss my land drop too. But the turn I hasted, I didn't have the option anymore. Alright, well my hand is six, we'll just keep everything. Could have ephemerate here. Lucky they don't. Does have another Fury, but so do I. Right, a persistable one anyways. Uh. Young Dingo, thanks for the raid, hope you're doing well. Good day to raid, we're doing some scamming. We 5 out with this list last night, then we 3 2, now we're about to be 2 1. Reanimator decks are always so hard to evaluate, though. But it's cool that the scam cards work with footsteps, is kind of the fun idea. We're here with Sanctifier injuries. We're 1 0 against Sanctifier today. Um, yeah, we, we beat. We Actually, we lost game 1 to Hammer, and then we beat Sanctifier in games 2 and 3, thanks to the old Quad Path of Perils. <laughs> Will Cycling persist right there? with Spiral's likely next play? No, no way, not with the Furies in the yard. Like, we're just, like, definitely casting Grief that turn. Do we get to go Persist and Spiral the following turn? Hold Eclipse to discard to Reunion, of course. Although, I guess in this turn I'm casting Grief. I like kind of, I kind of like Grief pre-combat, because if they have Solitude, like, we know about it, and we don't have to just attack into it. I think people need to put Bone Crusher to a Sanctifier. Well, the problem is it's like, Bone Crusher is like a mediocre game one card, right? Um, that makes your sideboard games better against Sanctifier. So I feel like just play Path of Peril instead. And also Bone Crusher only being Sanctifier if they block it and they don't have a hammer on it, which is not every single time either. Oh, they had Solitude and Ephemerate. Yikes. I can take the Obosh though. <laughs> Probably not taking Timeless Dragon. Uh, definitely attacking with Season Pyromancer because of the rebound ephemerate. 
Which there are 17 months, okay, thank you. Spoiler, Surge of Salvation. You and permanence you control gain hexproof till the turn. Prevent all damage. Black or red sources would deal the creatures you control this turn. We're saved! We're saved from scam! Rejoice! <laughs> Hooray! Scam is bad now! <laughs> <laughs> Scam is dead. Just kidding. Oh, I thought you were talking to Lucy. <laughs> oh, because I was doing my dog voice. Oh, uh, yeah. It's so hard to work. All I can think about is the Taylor Swift concert tonight. <laughs> I'm so excited. One of my coworkers is going. The one coworker that lives wow, that's crazy. down here. Mm -hmm. Only a hundred other thousand people going. What are the odds? Uh huh. Yeah, I know, right? Ugh. Well, I guess we're going to game three. I've waited Dingo for this loss. I'm so excited. No, I'm not taking him. I'm taking my best friend. Because he's like, oh, wait. Is there someone else that could, like, enjoy the concert more than me? I'm like, maybe my best friend. And then I told him, like, oh, my God, it's going to be so awesome. She's going to sing for, like, three hours. And he's like. You still need these story silences. Oh, I'm really glad that I'm not going. Because he's like, I don't think I could do three hours of Taylor Swift. And I'm like, yeah. Honestly. It's not just three hours, it's like three hours of travel, plus opener, plus three hours of Taylor Swift. Sarah, Flo, Musk, and thank you. I don't, I, I kind of like this card though, but I don't know if it's going to see much play. I would do ten hours straight of Taylor Swift. Oh. And it's like... Three hours of just Taylor Swift. She also has two openers. <laughs> yeah, um, crazy. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> I like like six Taylor Swift songs. I I would like to see them, but that's a lot of uh, <laughs> that's a lot of hours for. And I was like, I know like all her albums. Except for her first one, because I was the youngin', and I was like, I know the radio songs from that album, but from, okay, sp sweetie, yeah. from Speak Now <laughs> to Midnight, I have all those albums, she even the remade the ones. Albums. Wait, I didn't do the remade of <laughs> of uh, Fearless, because Fearless was an early album that was like, mm. <laughs> ah, no, <laughs> no, I must talk about Taylor Swift. <laughs> Can scam a fury. Probably rather just play Fable. Okay, sweetie, I'm, I'm glad that you're going to Taylor Swift tonight. But someone, someone has to work. Yeah. <laughs> I have like a manicure stick, and I accidentally mm -hmm. sat on it and poked my leg. My poor sweet ADHD GF. Mm -hmm. I guess I just play the rebirth. I can just hard cast grief next turn. <laughs> Didn't play around Blood Moon very well, but I'm not sure that they have Blood Moon in their deck post board. Yeah, yeah she's super psyched. All right. Obviously, they could have like Solitude plus White card as the two mystery cards, but it's like that's not even bad. You talking about Search of Salvation? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like a fine, fine card. I don't know if it's, it's it doesn't draw a card. It's not Veil of Summer. 
Um, but it, it does stop Fury. It's, you know... Um, it's... A, it's... <laughs> they did have Solitude White Card as the two unknowns. Alright, well. Could have played around it. Still not that big a deal. I told you about the stomp. Wait, why are we talking about stomp? Just like as the... That's the anti-sanctifier attack. That never works. <laughs> Why do I hammer seems like the play? Yeah, yeah, it seems like an okay card there. Like it, it does like really significantly compete with blacksmith skill though. Like I'm not I'm not sure that like you would play that over blacksmith skill. Um I guess it stops all fury damage, but I don't know. Because we're talking about the way I see I see. I think Boros Obosh should be playing Moonlight Cyborg. Well, you lose Obosh. It's, it's the awkward thing, of course. But it is, like, such a versatile and premium Cyborg card. But it's also so versatile. It comes in a lot, so you lose Obosh a lot. And, like, Obosh is also really good against Rhinos. And, like, that's a matchup you'd want Moonlight for. But I agree that creativity is really hard for, like, the Boros Obosh decks. Which we found out with the uh, Lotus Field version. Which is, of course, like, why Obosh is so fun. It's, like... Is it worth it? I don't know. <laughs> is it worth it? Is it worth losing Obosh for these matchups? Um, I kind of like hasting the Goblin so that we can potentially hardcast Archon. In fact, I could just play Malachi Rebirth as a land. But I think the discarding to Fable or, or Grief is probably better. I tried a lot personally, like the versus creativity. Yeah, that's the that's the main thing, of course, creativity. It's a, it's a conversation for sure. I'm, I'm definitely on board to talk about it. Actually discarding nothing, I think. Because now they put the Obosh in their hand, I need to grief it. And I'm going to Malak rebirth the grief. Can also go Bitter Reunion next turn, Haste the Fable and their Draw Step Copy Grief. Depending on what they do this turn. Is it the third? I guess it's, not, it's only the second Ragavan, but they hit me a bunch with the, the other one. <laughs> they hit me this many times. Thankfully, they're removing the Blackleaf Cliffs curse from me. As, I, I've been liking the deck. We tro I trophied with it last night. I've had a positive record today, at least. Yeah, Ragavan has exiled <laughs> a lot of lands. Two Archons in Yard from Solitude, also. Oh no, I did it. I set the upkeep stop. So I set upkeep stop because I'm playing around um, then top decking Lightning Bolt or Solitude. So I guess I guess I guess in the draw step it's still they still stop it the same way. Damn it. And now they get to Fury that I could have taken. I get to take the Ragavan, I get to Fury their Fury. We're still pretty ahead, but that was a pretty rough misclick. Better than Flame Tongue Kavu. No season Pyromancers in the yard, thankfully. Yeah, that's, yeah, been a fun matchup for sure. I think I just leave Persist in my hand. Could be a combo. Could tap to. Could have tapped Blackleaf Cliffs over Sacred Foundry. I guess it was there was no downside to. We're two and one. No pretty good of the day. Like like so we had two losses in the first league, but one of them was to a green red Ponza deck that was playing 
main deck endurance, main deck clothis, sideboard relic, sideboard hearse, and we almost won anyways. And we lost to elementals. I will say that, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things I really like about this version compared to other versions we played in the past. So, like, I really like that this is a, a reanimator deck that doesn't just lose to Blood Moon. Um, like, when you're playing, like, any of the Esper versions, you just, like, can't beat Blood Moon. And so, like, being, like, really resilient to it passively is so nice. Because when you play Esper, you're like, I have to worry about Voidwalker, and I have to worry about Blood Moon, and I have to worry about them game one. But... Here, he's like, you have Fury for Voidwalker. Obviously, you have Salty for Voidwalker there, but you, you just, like, don't have to beat every single thing uh, with your spells. Okay, we have Fury Persist against Merfolk. Uh, I also like that, the, like, you can be more proactive in the deck with Grief and Fury than you can with Solitude and, and Grief. And you also have more ways to scam, of course, too. Like, you try the all be one combo deck? Um, I, I think I, I was the one that built it. <laughs> Uh, we trophied with we trophied with uh, green red version did well with mono red version did worse with lotus field versions. I haven't seen anybody else play them. <laughs> that doesn't really do anything. Okay, so if they cast the Flash Lord, we can persist the Fury. But then they can sack the Persist Lord. Okay, they can, they can counter the Persist, but then their creatures die at least. Two cards in their hand. Mutable getting in. Yeah, I was playing Footsteps in the Esper Atraxa deck. I was only playing two copies, though. Um, I could go Footsteps plus Malak Rebirth, but I could just do that later if they dismember this. Or I can leave up the Malak Rebirth if they have dismember. It's probably way better, right? Okay, so let's... Grief first. If they have subtlety, it's kind of awkward. Ugh. All right, probably need to leave back on defense here. Okay, this is actually like actively good for me. Really want them to play another Merfolk. How, how, how hard could that be? You're playing Merfolk. They have one too because they're not mute vaulting, or they have more interaction. Not force, is it? Can't really be anything else, though. I think I still have to cast this. This, like, but his fury is just soloing them. Hmm. So I can't play the fable because then they can counter my Malachi rebirth after I block. Okay, so we go block here into one, three. Is it indestructible? I can make it not indestructible. Wow. So I guess I go two, two. Hold on. Two, two against another hex catcher. Is the best because I still kill one of the hex catchers, but their Sylvoon lives. Guys, is Fury good against Merfolk? I think I'm actually down to grief their last card. It should be a spell. Okay. Oh, it's a spell like effect. Yeah, for, hashtag Phyrexian Flesh Forager, which is the Halo Forager of um, whatever set that was from.
You don't need to hurt Savoon. It had four damage on it. Oh, right. I, I don't know. I was forgetting about double strike. Yeah, I could have killed the Beautiful. I, I, don't, I, I did only think it had two damage on it. Sorry. I think I'm like never discarding Swamp. So let's play it. Yeah, they pack it up. Fury is good against Spurfolk. Another Stony Silence matchup. Just it ends up coming in like so it's it's like against Murktide they have all artifact based graveyard hate. But there's also like so many random decks like Verofolk and Mono Red Obosh and like Cabal Coffers, where they're just like on a <laughs> Boros Obosh, <laughs> but he gets a lot of them this league. They're just in on like all the uh, artifact based graveyard hate. Ends up just randomly being uh, so important. I can't mulligan this, so let's not. Let's have the mulligan six. Oh, I, dude, I totally forgot to bring in Path of Peril against Merfolk. <laughs> it's not that it's not that necessary. I should have brought him in though. <laughs> Obviously. But like, what are we going to path of peril after we've uh, furied our opponent all the times? Huh. Yeah, I guess we take subtlety tide shaper. I might discard Fury just to persist it. We'll see. I feel like that makes sense with uh, strong the Bitter Union or the Fable here. Yeah, they didn't sell to the Grief, which is. Um, I'm not sure. Probably fine, to be honest. Somewhat marginal. <clears throat> It's good they can't subtlety the persist on the fury either. Seeing Jeskai Obosh with Elish. Yeah, that, that, that deck's interesting. I I haven't loved Elish Norn in decks that are like literally just casting it on turn five, like with no mana acceleration. Although you do have Ragavan and Fable, which is sometimes acceleration. So if they miss their land drop again, I guess they have two vials, so if they have um, two lords, they can put them in, although now they have Sylvoon up. So their hand is a lord, potentially Sylvoon. Yeah, I'm not blocking. Let's see what we draw. So I can go, I think I'll discard Grief, attack with both. And then post combat, I can Stony Silence off the treasure token. Or now I can just main phase Stony Silence. And then make them do whatever they're going to do. Obviously, I lose the Shaman token, but I think I think it's better to like get better info on how I'm attacking. Because there's a persisting hurry plus haste this turn and put the clock on them. I think knowing that they have the extra lord, I kind of would prefer to do this. I suppose I'm only killing one if they don't block. Although they they probably block the shaman. Oh, I can block like this though, right? Damn. I right, just plays around my persist really well. Do you think I just kill this? Oh, I can do three one, three one, and then streaks. Never mind, never mind. Okay, I'm just, I've been so bad at like like killing the extra creature at the Lord lately. Okay, so we lost playing for a four one last league against Elementals. Let's get another four one prediction going. Um, pretty marginal hand, borderline hand. I think I keep them. Feels weird it took so long to find this deck. This, deck, this, deck is, this version has just been around the whole time. <laughs> Wild, right? 
So I beat I beat Scam playing for my 5-0 last night. I do think the matchup is tough with the main decking Voidwalker and like being on the grief plan, but um, you can still outdraw them. I may actually want to just grief here so they can't Voidwalker me. Does not feel very good, but I do actually think it's correct. Huh. So usually Blood Moon's not too big a problem. I don't think it's that big a problem here either. Like, even if I cut off a of black mana, I still have so many, like, red cards. But I, I guess their Fury and their Grief are also pretty mediocre, so I'll just take Blood Moon, which is actually doing more here. So they play Blood Crypt Tapped, Grief Fury, Mire, Mystery. Looking for a discard outlet now. Probably not able to use this as a discard outlet. Dash Ragavan. Yeah, I asked Dingo about it. He said he tried the Nahiri version. Um, and I do I do like Nahiri, but I think I think the footsteps plan working with the scam plan is like is pretty exciting at least. Well, second Archon, probably the worst draw. Maybe they'll play Liliana of the Veil. Vale. <laughs> wow. I guess they need most of my hand. Uh, Season Pyromancer. Uh, no, but that one's not so bad. I'll just draw a red card and be back in the game. And it's Ragavan Fury, though. Three mystery cards. Getting hit by the Ragavan again. It also still draws Season Pyromancer. Ooh. Oh, thank goodness they didn't evoke Grief. That's a huge punt. I drew the red card. Uh, definitely have to uh, go for the scam here. Even though even though Fable's really good, I have to kill the Voidwalker. But them them not like them not like evoking the Fury pitching there. Oh, oh sorry, they they used their grief already. Forgot that they used it. Ugh. But like if they had any black card in their hand, this was a mistake, I think. So Fury pitch Fury, did they draw their own scam card? They did not, that's definitely a start. They'll hit me with Ragavan. Oh, they'll play Fable. Okay, so they hand is Ragavan, Mr. Card. I need to draw Season Pyromancer or my own Fable. Draw Blackleaf Cliffs. Still have Owls, I can go like Reunion into Persist. They, keep, they discard no cards, which is uh, on a, like a scale of good to bad, pretty bad. I beat Scam playing for the 5-0 last night. I do think it's probably your worst matchup, though. I think it's worse than Murktide, because they have the main deck Graveyard Hate. Hey, I'm supposed to be the one top decking Spyro here. Maybe maybe I will. Maybe I will. Okay, we'll go to game. Maybe we theoretically had a series of draws. Let's go to game two. My heart can't take it anymore. So, um, you need to bring in Wear Tear against them because they can have Leyline of the Void and Hearse. I tip, so, I, th I think what I did last night was I brought in... You need Terminator for Voidwalker also. So, I did this swap and I brought in three Wear Tear and I trimmed two Footsteps. And then I think I cut an Undying Effect. I'm not sure if I still want to. Let's, let's cut an Undying Effect. Could go down to one Footsteps also. But I feel like a lot of times you like discard your Archon before they get Voidwalker down and you're like just dying to draw a uh, Persist. So like having six like reanimation effects feels like a good number. Okay, on the play. I wish I was on the draw. <laughs> Hard matchup to Mulligan in. Let's keep. I can scam a I can scam a Voidwalker. Hmm. 
Take one, take Archon? <laughs> There's one wrong answer here, opponent. There's one wrong answer. Yeah, that one seems reasonable. I can still use the Persist to Scam Fury, maybe. Um, I, I'm going to play this to get my Sacred Foundry, I think. Well, okay, I guess I don't... Do I need Sacred Foundry if... They didn't leyline me. I guess I can, I still can kill their like enchantments, their sagas. Oh, and then here like I'm just not I'm not now I'm not feeling like I'm getting Blood Moon Dever, so I'm just I'm gonna just get this tapped. I'll draw season pyromancer here. <laughs> That's my cast phrase. They miss they're missing land, so I'm definitely gonna fury, especially with the persist in my hand to kill like a void walker off the top or something. Taking Arton getting Surgical would have been the right answer. That would have been fun. <laughs> I haven't seen Surgical much over Leyline of the Void lately, but sometimes, yeah, they, they do play it. So, seven, so Mana Screw versus Mana Flood. Classic dynamic. No one will ever mulligan against me. Dusk Legion Duelist. Um, I, I, don't, I just don't know any of the card's names by hearts yet, y'all. Just don't know the name. Deeper Wayfinder. And this, you might play this in Merfolk. It doesn't seem like particularly good though. They Grief Pitch Undying Malice, which means that they have all red spells in their hand, right? This has to mean their hand is all red spells, which is so weird. So they have Fury, Fable, Blood Moon, Bolt as like the only combination of cards they can have. Am I wrong about this? I don't think I'm wrong about this. Or they have Voidwalker, they don't want to pitch Voidwalker, but I don't know why they wouldn't necessarily. Yeah, well, this is the best draw. Yeah, I also haven't seen this one yet, the Squeaking Duelist. Who summons Surgical Extraction to my opponent's hand? I think I hold this to discard to another reunion. One or more counters put on duelist, draw a card, ability triggers only once each turn. Uh, probably not very good. You main deck Dothy Voidwalker! <laughs> <laughs> they pitched Dothy Voidwalker. Alright, you win, you win. <laughs> Fucking shit. Okay, I'm gonna take my draw step though. Okay, now you win. I'm off it. <laughs> I don't wanna I don't wanna play a game three against Surgical Hearse Voidwalker. <laughs> it's so much graveyard hate. Alright, let's do one more. I'm having fun though. These go pretty quick too. Surge of Salvation, yeah, it's a card. I, I, it doesn't draw a card like Veil vale of Summer does. It seems 